once the download completes and you have the HTML5 boilerplate, just extract the zip file and rename the folder you get with the name of the project you want to develop. Let's say my first website. Now, if you access the files and folder inside the folder you have, you can find the MD files. Those two, you can delete them. We don't need them. In addition, we also don't need the CSS file files. We are going to use the less files, Twitter Bootstrap includes, and compile them into CSS. So let's delete this folder as well. We also don't need the doc folder, so let's just delete it. The next step would be to edit the .ht access file. It comes with the HTML5 boilerplate framework, so just open it with an editor and introduce the required changes. It is well documented, so you can learn from the comments about the possibilities. The humans.txt file includes credits for people who took part in development of this website. So we can add our name or the names of our developers. The license.md file includes information about who can use the website, its files, etc. It is a textual file. We can edit in a very simple way and introduce the required changes. The readme.md file, again, it is a simple textual file. We can edit it and add additional information about the website. Over here, we can find the Apple Touch Icon Precompose PNG file. It is a file that will be used as the icon for the website on many mobile devices. Um, it should be with the dimension of 144 pixels uh, square or 152 as in this version. Here we have an additional file, a smaller one. This one is the icon, a 32 pixel square icon image. Uh, we can introduce changes into these two files in order to get something more uh, specific for the project we develop. We can now move forward and copy files from the Twitter Bootstrap folder, files and folders that include files, into our project folder, the new website we develop. To make things simpler, I recommend on having two um, Finder windows or if you work with Windows then two Explorer, two Files Explorer windows so you can easily copy paste files from the Twitter Bootstrap framework into the My First Website HTML5 boilerplate. The next step would be to copy the fonts folder from the Twitter Bootstrap framework to the folder which is our new website, the project we are working on. In addition, it would be highly recommended to add .ht access file into this specific folder. So it would be simpler for me just to copy this one into the fonts folder and then copy it, uh, edit it using one of the text editors you have. I will delete everything and write a new file. This .ht access file will ensure that every web browser will um, display the website properly and be able to access the fonts folder that we have. The next step would be taking the JavaScript files from Bootstrap into our um, 
folder, the folder which is a new website, a new project, project we are working on. So within the JS folder, create a new folder, name it bootstrap, and just copy all JavaScript files you have over here. into this bootstrap folder. Each one of these uh, JavaScript files is a specific plugin. Once the development ends and we are ready to go to production, then we can delete those plugins we don't need, so the loading of the website will be, will be simpler, faster. The next step would be updating the plugins.js file, a file we can find within the JS folder in the project, in the folder of the new website we are working on. So just open this file, plugins.js. Now on the bottom you can find place any jQuery helper plugins in here. And over here what we should do is just copy the Twitter bootstrap um, JavaScript file. So if you go to the bootstrap folder where you extracted the zip file you downloaded, over here you can find the dist, short for distribution folder, and here you can find JS, and here you can find the folder, the file uh, bootstrap.min.js. Let's open it. And now we just need to copy paste this file, select all, copy, and we shall place it over here under this line. So just paste it and we are set, ready to move forward. The next step would be to copy the folder less where we can find the less files to the project we are working on, the folder of the website we develop. So here it is, all files are copied. Let's open to edit the index.html file we can find within the uh, folder which is the website we develop the folder we received when extracting HTML5 boilerplate. So I just open it with a simple text editor and let's uh, start to introduce a few changes. Let's start with uh, setting a title. Our first Twitter bootstrap website. According to this code, when the web browser is Internet Explorer lower than 7, this code will be displayed and the user will be able to uh, browse a website where he can find other uh, web browser to download for using on his computer in order to uh, browse the website we developed. Now, to be up to date with uh, um, the Twitter Bootstrap framework and its compatibility with uh, Internet Explorer, make sure to consider whether to change this code. For example, we can specify 8 instead of 7 as Twitter Bootstrap moves forward. Now, on the bottom we can find this simple paragraph. Curr currently this is the text we get to see when browsing uh, this uh, web page. Below this uh, paragraph we just have uh, script elements that uh, refer the script libraries we are using. So if we want to add some more interesting uh, stuff into our web page we need to change this into something else. So let's delete it and let's add, uh, let's say, header element with the role assigned with a banner
and you've over here in the middle let's add a nav element row assigned with uh, navigation let's close the element in addition let's add the main segment main rule assigned with main and over here let's specify the h1 element um, let's set a title and some text within a paragraph um, that would be enough let's close the paragraph and let's add a footer rule assigned with a uh, content info let's close the footer and let's place a paragraph and in order to have the text uh, small let's place the small element and within the two tags let's place something like um, or let's say let's put it a bit different let's put this on the left and now let's see the outcome so just browse the folder and try to open this file with a web browser so this is the outcome for now Let's introduce the required changes in order to get uh, navigation bar properly working. So we have this dev element that describes or let's say represents the navigation bar. Uh, let's add the CSS class signed with uh, the value navbar space navbar dash static dash top space navbar dash default now um, let's continue with the changes and add over here the div element that wraps the possibilities so this development will be with uh, the CSS class container and here within this div element I first uh, start with uh, div element responsible for the title of the navigation bar with the class nav bar dash header okay let's say uh, close it and within this specific navigation bar I place a link a element with the class attribute assigned with uh, nav bar dash brand and the link itself will be for the very same file index.html and the title of the navigation bar will be our um, let's say services or let's call it um, 
That's my kill. Now, just after this small div, let's add unordered list element. Uh, assigned with the CSS class nav nav bar dash nav nav um, and here let's the list items we want so we have the first list item with the CSS class active and a a tref signed with index.html because the first element we want to link to the main page it can be um, home page for example let's add more elements li and this is the closing tag and in between I place a element with href signed with dash one option and in a similar way just for the sake of a simple code demo This is the second option, and here we have the three options. Now we have three um, li elements. Now, if I refresh, I can see this result. Um, as you can see, there is a typo. We forgot to close a link element. And as, uh, as you can see, it happened more more than once. So let's fix it. Now we can expect everything to look uh, much nicer as soon as we add the CSS files. As you recall, we still don't have CSS in our project. If you check the less folder within the bootstrap uh, framework folder, the one you get when you download bootstrap uh, extract it, yeah, well within the less folder you can find the bootstrap.less folder. Uh, this file includes links for the other relevant less files. So what we need to do for now is taking this uh, file and compile it into one CSS file. Once the compilation succeeds, we can take that CSS file and add it to our project. There are many less compilers we can choose from. I chose to download Koala. I downloaded and then started the Koala application. The next step would be to drag and drop the less folder we currently have inside the folder of the website we develop. In addition, make sure you create a CSS folder in the same level. So I drag and drop. Now I select bootstrap.less, right click and select compile. Now if we go back to the folder of the website we develop, we can find within the CSS folder the file bootstrap.css. Now let's get back to the index.html. Now we just need to make sure we include the link for the bootstrap CSS file. As you can see, the result of the compilation is a CSS folder full with uh, CSS files. Once we verify that we indeed have the link for the CSS file, we can give it a try. This is the output.